Right. So Open Court is here with Philip Pelavo, who is in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan, one of the many stops he's had over the last six months. So thanks yep. for, for, for being you know, with us and catching everybody up on what you've been up to, because people ask me about you quite a bit. Okay. I'm actually surprised to hear. I've been kind of flying below the radar. So it's, uh, it's nice to be back to speak with you and chat with it. Yeah, it feels like it's been a very, very long time since we've seen each other face to face. A lot has happened in that time. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, you played this morning and won your first round match at an ITF in Kazakhstan. And you're following up a title last week. So That's congratulations right. on that. And first question is, what was the winning feeling like after the last few years? It was really good. Uh, it's obviously been a while since I, I had a title under my belt. I think since the last time I won a challenger in Knoxville. So I think Knoxville. it's about four years, almost on the dot. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah I've, I, I, since coming back, I've had a couple of finals. The first one, especially, I had a few chances. I was up pretty much the whole match and didn't close it out. So not that I was thinking about it during this match, but uh, once it's over, like, okay, it feels good to, to close it out with a win and and not be on the losing side at the end of the week. So I was happy. And especially against Kuznetsov as well. I, that was honestly, I think, the toughest out of the three opponents I had. The conditions were the easiest because they were indoors, but uh, the, the level probably was the best that I've played in a long time. Well, exactly. I mean, he's, I think, a top 40 guy coming back from injury, but a high-quality opponent and when I saw that I said well if he's gonna win it yeah he's gonna earn it not that you that's wouldn't it. normally but I mean that is a quality quality yeah. tennis player yeah that's it he's not gonna give it to you you really have to play a good level to to like you said earn your win so all right now when the pandemic hit which was already more than a year and a half ago to all of our dismay uh, you were you were playing challengers I think the last That's one right. was in Calgary. So when the tournament started getting canceled, um, what was your first thought and what, what did you do? Well, it's funny, actually, in Calgary, we got there and obviously we're aware of COVID and uh, the tour manager and he sat us down. We were just kind of talking about how it's all looking. And he, he came up saying that it's a very real possibility that they're going to cancel tournaments and everyone's looking at him like man you're exaggerating i mean COVID's bad but there's no way they're going to shut everything down and like two weeks three weeks later everything's done so you That's were preparing it. you were preparing to go to italy to play more challengers well actually uh i was actually getting helped out by roberto Bergin and oded mm -hmm. in uh in vancouver yep. and the plan was to go play on clay and i hadn't played on clay for a while so there's quite a few uh, 25Ks in Sardinia, I think it was. There's just a, this resort that had uh, probably like four or five in a row or something. Santa and Margarita de Pula. Exactly. That's that's the one. So <laughs> I was going to play those. I was going to play maybe two or three just to get back on clay and then go play Rome Challenger, things like that, because I think I was around 300. Yeah. So still comfortably, at least in the qualies. And uh, they got canceled. And so I started to, I mean, we, we, we ended up, training for a bit and then I think everything closed down for about a month completely or maybe maybe even longer I don't quite remember so yeah it was a little bit of uh from one day to the next it was kind of just uh okay this is what we're doing now and that we can do in the situation and kind of waiting for everything to to clear up again which took a lot longer than everyone expected I guess uh, at that point, were the clubs, I mean, this is winter, were the, were, the, were the indoor tennis clubs closed in Vancouver as they were here? Yeah, the, everything closed down for a bit and uh, obviously weren't really able to go out apart from maybe getting groceries and stuff. But yeah. um, so we're doing fitness sessions with uh, Sergey, who was uh, our, our fitness guy out there, and he was doing Zoom home session. So we had a, probably like 10, 15, 20 people on the Zoom call and he would just run the session and we'd do hour, hour and a half sort of body weight, little cardio, little, little bit of uh, calisthenics sort of stuff. And it was actually, it's an inner routine for, for as long as we needed to do it. And obviously. So play basically started again 
around August. I mean, I know it did at the sort of challenger ATP level. Yeah. Um, but it started without you. So was there some soul searching going on? I mean, you know, what did you do between let's say August and March when you started again, which was nearly a year after COVID hit? A little bit, I wouldn't say long story, but a few things happened. Um, I'd been having issues with my right foot. The, the party. Basically, I got up to 160, it was starting to get quite bothersome and it just kept getting worse. It was something I've had since 2012 and just uh, <laughs> eventually got to the point where I had to deal with it. And uh, I tried to actually, because the, the issue was that I, I, I was asking doctors about dealing with it. Basically, they said, it's a career ending surgery. That's why I never really get it. But then eventually what happened is that I think they were mentioning sort of like the latent Hewitt toe fusion where they basically fuse the toe. So you don't have pain, but you don't have any range of motion. And so my, my toe was blocked completely by some bone spurs and growths and damaged cartilage. I didn't have any motion upwards. So I was kind of running on the outside of my foot. I mean, obviously losing speed and then causing hip and back issues for a while. And um, so I actually spoke to some doctors in Vancouver and it turns out there's a really good surgeon there. And he said, no, no, it's just clean out the cartilage clean out the, the, a few months till you're back. And obviously there's a small chance that something might go off and, and, and you're not going to be able to play again. But uh, chances are that uh, you'll be a lot better after we're done with this. So I tried to get that done probably in April or May of 2020, but obviously there are doctors were only seeing emergency COVID patients. So, so you did have the surgery and it yes, ended yes. Up being in, when? In August. Okay. So oh, in that's, August. Okay. Yeah. So um, originally I was trying to get it in April or May, but obviously weren't, wasn't able to. And then uh, August had it, was out for a few months, was in a boot, uh, started playing pickleball to kind of get the, <laughs> the legs moving and uh, then got back on court. And um, yeah, it took me a while obviously to get back to normal movement and, and feel like uh, I'm solid on the court, solid on my legs. I had a few months off with uh, surgery, obviously with COVID we were on and off. So I basically hadn't played all year. And uh, then I got back to tennis tournaments in March in yeah. Egypt. It was supposed to be a little earlier, but I wasn't quite ready. The body was still on and off. Um, but then I actually picked up COVID in my third tournament in Egypt. Oh, uh, come on. And I act it was really bad. Like I, I had it really bad. Like three in three days, I lost probably six or seven kilos. I was hallucinating what? from the fever. Um, my lung capacity went down to about 40%. Like I my throat was bleeding from coughing too much and I, I didn't eat or sleep for three days not even like a little bite of food I, I couldn't get anything down so it was uh took me a few months to get back I'm still yeah I was in the hotel Probably. basically in my in my room I wasn't uh wasn't leaving the room uh I had people bring me food and and then once I once I got over it I made sure that and went back to Poland to see my parents so uh, yeah, it was a good two weeks there that uh, I was kind of struggling in the hotel. Was there, I'm looking at the, at, at what you've done over the last less than eight months. So the three tournaments in Charm, two 25Ks in Prague, two 15Ks in the lovely capital of Monastir, Tunisia, uh, 25K in Poland, 15K in Slovakia, one in Luxembourg, then four in Poland, 325Ks in South Africa, and now your second one in Kazakhstan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a lot. I mean, it's even, the, I'd say the year and a half before COVID hit, you weren't taking a whole lot of weeks off anyways. I mean, it's a yeah. grind. It is, yeah. Um, honestly, I was just happy to come back and play. I took some weeks to train and, and try to get the body. Uh, it was one of those things where, I, I basically just had to wait for the body to kind of get better on its own. There wasn't a whole lot of forcing I could do by overworking it or anything. And like I said, the lungs went down to about 40% or 50%. And so that was, there, there wasn't anything I could do with that. Uh, I just had to wait till the damage receded and, and uh, till I felt better. So uh, like I said, my weight's still not quite there yet, but pretty much everything else feels good. Uh, and, 
I just tried to get out there, play, see how, see how, how, how I could get back into it and just try to get matches. Cause the thing I needed the most was play cause I had been out of it for so long. And I'm the kind of guy that the more I play, the better I feel. I get a few wins. I get a little bit of, oh, I'd probably estimate it's between 80 and 90 something percent. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's getting close to a hundred, but I haven't actually properly tested it recently, but it feels good. I don't feel like I really have any issues with it. So, um, definitely a big difference from before. Cause I was like in monastery, for example, it was pretty hot. And I just, I was, well, one of the three setters, it wasn't as bad, but, uh, the second one I lost, it was just I, from physically, I couldn't handle it. So, uh, and the game obviously was very up and down and mostly down for the first part. And, uh, yeah, a long road got on clay as well. And there weren't really a whole lot of options for hard courts. So, that was another battle in itself because playing futures 15s on clay courts is a lot different than playing the challengers and ATPs. The yeah, courts are dodgy. Not the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm not a big fan of the clay in general. Um, I've had my good results on it, but again, it, at the higher levels, it's it's a different game. You can actually play. It's not really suited to me. I I'd say as much in in on the dodgy courts not to make excuses or anything, but like I said, just another battle in itself. And I'm happy to be back on, on hard courts again. So that yeah. was, that was my other question was, was how do you, I mean, coaching is expensive and obviously you're not going to be able to have a coach traveling with you. So how do you yeah. maintain, never mind, at least get better in terms of your game when you're on a road trip odyssey like that one? Well, I mean, obviously it's, very helpful to have a coach with you all the time and, and helping you out and drilling you and to with the plan of what we were working on and just to see your matches as well and and from an outside perspective give you an idea of what went on there um but for the most part i mean i'm, I'm 27 i know my game pretty well i know myself pretty well Yeah, yeah, I think Florida, and I'm still not 100% sure where or who it will be with, but I've, I'm talking to a few people and trying to figure out the plan for a good few weeks and doing an off season probably, I'm guessing, late December through January, because I'm not going to play Australia, I'm not going to play, I think, just because they're usually pretty tough, so my ranking is not going to be quite good enough, I don't think, so I'm going to probably try to play through the end of this year as much as I can, and uh by the new year so that's your plan really to just keep on going as long as there as there are tournaments in 2021 basically pretty much i mean within reason i'm not yeah. going to try to play like 10 in a row or anything but uh <laughs> trying to go two three maybe four max and then week off two weeks off maybe and then go again uh because i just need matches as many as i can obviously my ranking needs to get better and the more i play the better my chances to to get it up and and at the moment, I'm feeling good with my game. I'm starting to feel like I'm like the match against Kuznetsov, for example. I could go deep in challengers with that kind of tennis. And it was the first time I felt that good since even before uh, COVID. Uh, I, I was struggling a little bit at that time as well. And so, yeah, the game felt really good. And um, a lot of things that I was working on and trying to improve and struggling with leading up kind of cleared out and, and got better as and okay, the question for anyone outside the top 100, how are you swinging it? How are you managing it financially? Because especially at the futures level, prize money is not what it should be, could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plenty of discussions to be had about that, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, financially it's difficult, obviously, which is part of the reason why I'm in Europe as well, because it's just a lot cheaper to travel. And, and get going again on tours. There are other ways to save money as well, whereas Canada is it's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, you're not gonna make money on the Futures Tour or Manny's finals or winning. Uh, so you're not covering your flights and your hotels otherwise, basically. Um, and even then, unless you're being smart about yeah. it, you're still losing money. So for a little bit, like I said, I was traveling with my parents, staying with them in in uh, in Poland. So some costs were, but um, 
yeah, I was losing money for, for the first little while that I was back. Well, for the most part, actually. So just, uh, yeah, waiting until the game got back and, and uh, the level goes up. Because I, I, I know that my level's good enough to get back up there. It's just a matter of so that is just basically staying patient and not going crazy with seeing that stuff that was easy before COVID or just before second nature was I had to kind of relearn and, and get back to it so uh yeah just staying positive basically <laughs> but yeah financially futures are not sustainable let's put it that way yeah I get that looks I, I was flashing back the other day to that press conference back in 2012 uh, when you and Jeannie Bouchard had just come back from winning junior Wimbledon and, and you had yeah. the press conference in Montreal and the trophies were there. And can you, can you flash back to that time and, and remember, you know, how confident you were and how you must've thought, Oh, you know, okay, I'm on my way here because you've lived, I don't know, nine tennis lives since then. It feels like. It's definitely at that time, it was difficult to kind of gauge exactly what, it looked like because I was also just starting out on the pro tour. I was uh, playing futures, a little bit of challengers, but I had made a semi of a challenger earlier that year as well. So obviously I was quite confident coming out of juniors and having some good pro results already, having my ranking go up to, I, I don't know what, what it was, four or 500, something like that. So uh, definitely very positive and I felt good going forward. And then the year after having the win with, uh, with Niemann and going to 250 or 230 or whatever it was, it, it felt like I was on the right track, definitely. So um, obviously it was dealing with some pressure of, oh yeah, when, when's this guy going to get top 100? And then putting pressure on myself and then seeing guys that I was beating in juniors and beating coming out of pros, making it there where I was taking a little bit longer. Um, I had a few chances there as well, a few little close moments, like the match with Istamin, for example, mm. probably... Uh, I probably should have won that match, for example. And being third round of Rogers Cup is a little different than second round, especially if you get to play Djokovic. So uh, I've had a few close moments, close to breaking through and and or breaking through, like winning the challengers and getting to 160. Uh, but then obviously it didn't, it hasn't quite gone all the way to top 100 yet. So uh, there's always been a few reasons for that, I think. But uh, some different than others uh but yeah definitely felt pretty confident coming out of it in the press conference <laughs> there's a on both sides there's a little but you know what when you're 18 like who isn't yeah. cocky right exactly i mean obviously i was telling myself that it's going to take a bit i was trying to keep myself grounded but it's hard not to get catch into the hype to to, to uh believe that, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, this guy's going to be top 100. I'm like, yeah, yeah, why why am I not going to be top 100 in, in a year or two? So yeah, Why not? Yeah. Uh, exactly. I didn't see any reason why there wouldn't be, why I wouldn't be, but uh, at the same time, it's a lot easier said than done, so. Well, yeah, there's a thousand guys who, who want the same thing you do. So how do you yeah. stay, how do you stay optimistic? I mean, this is, you know, this is the dream you've had your whole life, basically. This is all you've ever wanted. How do you stay optimistic when life keeps throwing darts at you, basically? Um, I mean, I've had my moments where I've been a little bit more negative or down. Uh, but for the most part, I'm a pretty positive guy, I think. <laughs> I, I, I like to, well, I believe in myself and I, I like to see the best in any situation and, and, and find solutions to these problems, I guess. And I, I, the thing is that it's not like I haven't performed at a high level. So it's not like I haven't ever done it. I know I can get there. Uh, I've had wins against good players. Uh, one that comes to mind from more recently would have been Berrettini in Miami. And that just yeah. before he really broke through to the top 10, he was probably around. He was 95. Top, like, he was yeah, 95. Exactly. So yeah. He was starting his run up. And so he, I, I know that I can beat these guys and, and, and play at that level. So that keeps me going for sure. Just frustrating sometimes when you, when you see how you can play at that level. And then you see at, in, at other times that you're struggling to, to maintain that sort of thing or to reproduce it. And uh, I think one of the things is having a, a stable team and a stable plan definitely really helps going at it alone. Like I did probably the last year and a half before COVID was not 
not great, honestly. It's it's difficult to go through on your own, but uh, yeah, I think uh, staying positive is the most important thing, obviously, and I don't really have too many issues with that. So uh, I trust in my game. I know I'm going to get there. It's taking longer than I would have hoped back in that press conference, obviously, but uh, <laughs> uh, I know I know I'll get where I need to get. So. Yeah, I mean, I you look at that, uh, the Knoxville Challenger that you won, and you look at the yeah. list of players that you ticked off in that, yeah. in that, in that tournament. And it was, I mean, the, we, you know, we're talking about a lot of top 50 players at Fritz and, and whoever yeah. else that comes to mind. So as you said, the level is there. Uh, it, I think it's probably true of a lot of players have the level, but then, as you said, it comes down to what kind of a team do you have around you? How much support do you have? Some guys have more than others. Uh, yeah. having a full-time coach, having a coach traveling with you. It is, it is, um, I mean, everybody wants the same thing ultimately. And absolutely. And some have more uh, perks, more, yeah, more support than others. How can, how can Philip Pelavo, uh get more help or get more support or get, you know, it, it, it's, um, that's, a, is that the, that's a challenge really. Yeah, well, it all comes down to money, really. <laughs> that's, that's, Always. That's, that's, yeah. that's the only thing that really matters when uh, you're setting up your team. And then some people have their private sponsors. Some people have the federations really pushing them hard. And uh, at the moment, obviously, I'm doing it on my own. So uh, it's difficult to get that going. And you basically have to break through to a point where you're making enough money to invest in yourself. At the moment, uh, I'm not able to. No. But yeah. uh I know to the point where I'll be able to put some money into a coach and maybe travel with him a little bit more, but uh, yeah, a, a team definitely helps, especially if you have a good uh, plan all the way through the season and you're not kind of trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, you have someone who can even just feed you balls or something, which I've, I've tried to figure out at some tournaments. There've been some people that, for example, have been offering to say, Oh, Hey Phil, I'll, I'll go out and feed you a basket if you need and let's work on this, this and this. And so I know a few people that can help help me out here and there, but it's, it's, it's few and far between. So for the most part, you just have to grind it out until you start making enough money to, to pay for that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a bit of a long road, but that's how it is. That's it's, it's never perfectly evenly distributed across the board with everyone. So, yeah. Cause you know, when you're, when you're a junior who is, who is from a, a federation that has money, I mean, when you went through the program, that they were, I mean, they were, you guys were traveling all over the place. All that stuff was, was basically yeah. covered. I mean, that's a luxury that even most players don't have. So at some point, do you feel like they, they gave up on you or they do have structures where you get to a certain age, if you're not at a certain place, do you, is there, and you're not the first one to go through it. Do you feel, and I'm, I don't want you to crap on tennis Canada or anything, but do, yeah. at some point, do you feel like, a, like abandoned, like, why you guys don't believe in me anymore? Is that a normal sort of reaction? Well, of course. I mean, there came a point where I was trying to see if I could get a coach and, and obviously that didn't happen. Uh, whoever made the decision uh, obviously uh, had the reasons, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of happened from one day to the next where I had a coach and then I didn't really have a coach. I'd been traveling without one because we were splitting one with Fred. Uh, me and Braden were splitting Fred Niemeyer. Fred Niemeyer, yeah. And obviously... Braden had started to do a little better. I started to struggle a little more. And then at one point he was the one getting Fred to travel with him. Cause I mean, priority goes to the guy who's doing better. And uh, so I was going at it alone already back then for quite a bit and, and kind of sat down and they said, they said, yeah, yeah, we're not going to uh, get you another coach. I, Cause I asked if I could uh, have someone else travel with me here and there a week here, two weeks there. And so they, they didn't approve that. And, and obviously you feel a little abandoned when that happens. Cause I was still probably in the two hundreds, like I was still doing all right. Yeah. And I just made a final of a challenger as well. So uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel great. That's for sure. But uh, I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like there's, there's not much I could have done about it. I'm not going to go around feeling like a victim or anything and <laughs> I'm not going to go around talking talking crap about tennis Canada or anything no, either look, they, you you might uh, not even you might not even be here let's let's be real without the tremendous amount of support that they gave you as you were you know coming up through the yeah, ranks really so yeah. juniors, definitely they definitely helped out um 
so yeah, it's 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 uh it's hard not to have that reaction, but I mean it is what it is. I'm not gonna go and whine about it and just uh gotta figure it out on your own. And like I said, once you once you start winning a little more and people become more interested, you become more open to some sponsorships and everything like that. So we'll see what happens. But uh yeah, for the moment just gotta do it alone and and uh grind through the ranks again, which <laughs> I've done before. No, it's not the first time. Where do you hope to be a year from now, let's say, realistically? Well, realistically, back in the Challengers, hoping to be back in the Grand Slam qualities a year from now, for sure. Uh, that would be ideal. Whether or not that'll happen comes down to a few things. But uh, if I keep in this direction that, that I've got at the moment, I see why not? But uh, like you said, it's easier said than done. Um, I play, uh, playing the grand qualities, playing, uh, playing challengers, hoping to get into some ATPs and ranking wise, I mean, between probably 250 and, and 100, I'm guessing top 100 if I do really well, but, uh, yeah, that would have to be quite a run, I'd say for sure. I'm going to just chip away at it and take it week by week and not get too ahead of myself. I've, I've done that in the past where. I started thinking too much about where I'm going to be and, oh, I'm already thinking I want a challenger. So I'm going to be top 150 and then I'm going to be top hundred the next year and all this kind of stuff. So I yeah, just got to, got to take it one week at a time, one match at a time. And hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully right back up, up there at the top uh, by year, year's time. Yeah, do and just... obviously I'd, I'd like to be healthy as well. So well, that's the main without thing. that you've got nothing. So I yeah, mean, you can't so. do a thing. Exactly. Did your body did your body hold up well after playing the full you know full week of tennis last week? Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it actually what happened. It was an interesting week because uh, when we got here, I was sharing a room with someone, and the beds in the double rooms were actually not very good. Uh, you're sleeping like in a hammock, so basically oh like a bed. God. They're just super soft, and and your your back was rounded like that. And so I actually didn't play for the first couple. of days right before the tournament <laughs> my back went out completely like it wasn't out <laughs> when I was actually practicing with two nets off <laughs> so um and it was actually a great practice we were both playing well uh but I had to I had to take two days off and then it just got better progressively as the week went on but uh just before the match I didn't think I was going to be able to play the final just I I went out hoping my back would loosen up and it did and uh actually played really really well and now it's fine it, it just I, I changed rooms to a bigger bed. It's firmer and it's fine. So we don't have that issue anymore. Well, so, it's just another thing, another step on the yeah. road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the but, hammock uh, bed in Kazakhstan. I know. It's it's just, yeah, the mattress was just so, so soft. But yeah, I don't know. This one's a lot better, not having issues. Uh, the week in uh, South Africa as well, when I got to final, held up just fine. So um, yeah, my body's, my body's holding up fine. I'm just trying to, uh, take care of it to make sure that if I do get a lot of matches, I'm going to rest up afterwards and, and uh, take it step by step and not get too excited, get too ahead of myself with that. So um, obviously it depends how I, how, how I do the next few weeks, but a week where I take it a little easier is definitely going to be necessary after this tour. All of it. And yeah. then COVID, <laughs> anything yeah, else? I, I don't think there's anything else that could happen to you at this point. I think you've covered it all. Yeah. There, there are little things here and there, obviously that show up, but those are the two main things. And, and uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I didn't feel a need to, to uh, announce it to everybody. I just wanted to kind of fly under the radar, do my thing, get back to where I needed to be and, and not make a big deal out of it. And uh, it's, it's, it's nicer to be able to do that quietly than, than having everyone constantly badger like, oh, what's going on? Are you quitting tennis? Are you, what's go uh, are you done? And all this kind of stuff. And so I, I, I obviously get those questions. Hey, yeah. The questions they they always I think are similar, just kind of how people phrase them, and uh, with the attitude they phrase them. Obviously, in juniors there is a lot more optimism and hype around it, and now people are like, "Oh, what's going on?" You know. But uh, I see what you mean. I just wanted to get my 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 work done, so it was uh, it's just easy to put your head down, get to work, and and uh, stay positive, focused on what you have to do, and and keep moving forward and and then people are going to figure it out sooner or later once you get back to where you need to be. So, right. Well, it's the yeah. funny thing about a career arc too is that is that 
is that when you're when you're on the come up, everybody's like, oh, how far can you go? And then once yeah. you get to whatever level that is, it's almost like people like enjoy in some weird way watching the, you know, watching a fall or watching a tumble or watching a struggle. I don't know if that's human yeah. nature or they, they sometimes they call it the tall poppy syndrome where you have the yeah. tallest poppies. They want to cut the heads off so that they're back with everybody else. But it's, I, I guess at a certain point, you can't help but care about what people think about you. But at the same time, you have to basically just wipe all that well, off. I think that was earlier on in my career. I cared a little too much what people thought. Um, and now I really don't care at all. <laughs> so <I'm> just, <laughs> That's good. I mean, obviously, I, I, to a certain extent, you do, but not, not where it's affecting me or my tennis or anything. So just uh just doing my thing and uh, not really trying to explain myself to anybody or, or any of that kind of stuff just getting my work done and, and that's about it grinding yeah exactly that's it do you still travel with a guitar no i actually uh that ended up being a little difficult just carrying all that stuff obviously <laughs> and then the position of always like being punched over with the guitar is not the best for my back. So <laughs> I, I play when I'm at home, but uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I don't travel with it anymore. Even the guitar is like a grind. <laughs> Isn't yeah, that exactly. crazy? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, high profile guy, Kurt Cobain had big back issues because of playing guitar, so. Well, there you, well then you and Kurt, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <exactly. laughs> Listen, on that note, um, I'll leave you and let you to it. And thanks so much for catching everybody up on, on what you're up to. And I'm glad that things are, yeah, like I said, things are on the come up and um, slowly, but surely if you keep at it, good things will happen. And that's how, that's the only way you can think ultimately. Exactly. Just got to keep at it and keep going and trust in the process and get to where you need to be. Good. Thanks, Philip. Thank you good. so much. It was uh, seeing you again.